Jack Benny program. Starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Tis the night before Christmas, and at Jack Benny's house, there are presents for all, even cheese for the mouse. <laughs> Jack is up on a chair, then he's down on his knee, but you have to do that when you're trimming a tree. Well, we're all through, Mary. Gee, it was nice of you to come over and help me trim the tree. Well, if I didn't, you'd never get it done. Say, Jack, shall I put the snow around the bottom now? Not yet. I want to see if the lights are working. I'll hold up the bulbs, and when I say ready, you plug it in. Okay. Ready? Ready. Pull it out! Pull it out! Pull it out! <laughs> My goodness. Oh, Jack, why did you make me shut it off? Those lights were so pretty, especially those two blue ones that kept flashing on and off. Those were my eyes. <laughs> I must have been holding on to a bare wire. Well, it's your own fault. Every time you fool around with electricity, something goes wrong. It does not. I know plenty about electricity. Oh, sure. Remember what happened two years ago when you fixed your doorbell? What happened? I pushed the button and it burned down Crosby's house. <laughs> Stop exaggerating. Anyway, hand me that roll of tape. Give me that tape. I'll fix this bare wire right now. Here you are. Thanks. Comes to electricity. I know what I'm doing. See, when you see a bare wire, you just tape it up like... like this. And that way, it's an insulated against outside elements. There, that ought to be enough tape. All right, Mary, plug it in. Okay. Pull it out! Pull it out! Pull it out! For heaven's sake. <laughs> what happened, Jack? I taped my finger to the wire. <laughs> That's what happened. Oh, gee. And that time it is even prettier than before. What do you mean? Your nose lit up, too. <laughs> it did not. Let's get this tree finished before the gang gets here. But, Jack, what about the lights? Well, I have to let that go until later. Now, hand me one of those... Oh, little... Mr. Benny! What is it, Rochester? I baked that cake like you told me to. Good. Did you have enough whipped cream to spell out Merry Christmas on top? Yeah. Say, boss, how many R's in Merry? Two. Oh. So you better add one. Add one? I better cross one out. I got three. <laughs> well, leave it. It's better than ruining the cake. Okay. Oh, Rochester, will you please take these Christmas tree lights and fix them? Fix them? Yes. I ain't fooling around with electricity. Now, what are you afraid of? I ain't gonna get hit by nothing I can't hit back. <laughs> oh, Roger. Imagine being afraid of electricity. Suppose Robert Fulton was afraid of electricity. He never would have invented the electric light. <laughs> would he? Jack, you're thinking of Thomas Edison. Edison? Well, then, what did Robert Fulton do? He said, don't give up the ship. <laughs> that was John Paul Jones. Now, let's not start that again. Now, Rochester, please fix these lights, will you? Okay, okay. Let's see. Now, in electricity, there's the electrons and the electrodes. <laughs> then there's the positive and the negative. But I ain't positive which one is negative. <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. Then there's the atoms. Now, the atoms are supposed to go from the positive to the negative. Or maybe they go from the electrons to the electrodes. <laughs> then again, maybe they go from Natchez to Mobile. <laughs> Rochester. Now, as long as these atoms keep passing each other, everything is all right. Yeah. But when they meet halfway and start fighting... They're going to turn on anybody who tries to butt in. Rochester, I'm not interested in the scientific details. I just want you to fix those lights. And I promise you, while you're holding the wires, no one in this room will turn on the switch. I know, boss. While I'm holding the wire, you ain't going to turn on the switch. And Miss Livingston ain't going to turn on the switch. Of course not. 
Put way up there at Boulder Dam, there's a little man sitting in a room with thousands of wires around him. What? How do I know he ain't gonna do something just to break the monotony? <laughs> oh, all right, I'll fix it myself. Go back in the kitchen. Man. Come in. I'm looking for Mr. Benny. Mr. Jack Benny. Me? Yes. But you're a policeman. Well, now, what do you know? This blue uniform has given me away again. But, uh... But, but, officer... Mary, say something. But, but, officer... Is that all you can say? That's all you said. <laughs> now, now, officer... Mr. Benny, I hate to be doing this to you on Christmas Eve, but I have a complaint about you disturbing the peace last week at Moore's department store. At Moore's department... Oh, that! Well, officer, that wasn't my fault at all. You see, first I had trouble with some crazy floor walker who kept hollering, Stop breathing on my carnation. And then... A little sour, please. I'm writing it down. Yes, sir. How many R's in carnation? One. Then. And then some silly guy kept following me around, asking me what I thought I ought to buy his wife for Christmas. Now, I didn't mind it the first time or the second time, but he kept hounding me. And just before the real trouble started, I was standing by the perfume counter... When all of us... I was trying to buy some perfume for my sister, Flora. Here's your change, sir. Thank you. Come on, Mary. Let's get over I there. beg your pardon, mister. Oh, it's you again. What do you think I ought to buy my wife for Christmas? I told you before, I don't know what you should buy your wife for Christmas. Figure it out yourself. Figure it out yourself, he says. Figure it out yourself. Fine Christmas, spirit. Look, I don't care what you buy your wife for Christmas. Don't buy her anything. Don't buy her anything? We've been married for 12 years. What are you trying to do? Break us up? Look, I don't know your wife. I've never seen your wife. What's going on here? What's the trouble? That man's been caught stealing somebody's wife. What? At your age, you gray-haired wolf. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Well, I don't know your wife. One time, let me through. What's going on here? What's going... Oh, it's you, my little chupy with the droopy chupy. Now, cut that out and don't blame me for this because it's... Stop breathing on my carnation. <laughs> I'll breathe on it as much as I like. <laughs> You're darn right on that, and this is all your fault, mister. Ask me to buy your wife for Christmas. For all I care, you can buy her a dog collar. What size? What size? There you are, folks. You see what a crazy guy is, and you blame me. Why, it's not my fault. I'm not the type that would start trouble. I'm a peaceful home... Ah, shut up! <laughs> oh, come on, Mary. Let's get out of here. And that's... That's exactly what happened, officer. Believe me. By golly, it's amazing. It sounds like something you'd hear on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm convinced it wasn't your fault, and I'm going to forget all about this complaint and be wishing you folks a Merry Christmas. The same to you, officer. And a Happy New Year. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Say, Mary, he was a nice fellow at that. Yes, wasn't he? he was. Now, come on, Mary, let's put the presents around the tree before the gang gets here. Well, Mary, we got all the packages under the tree. 
It looks nice, doesn't it? It sure does. Jack, if you're not going to use the Christmas tree lights, let's put on the candy canes. Okay, here's the box, and you can... Hey, wait a minute. I had 12 candy canes, and now there are only 11. Where's the other one? Don't look at me. I'm not looking at you. I'm asking you. All right, I ate it. Here's 10 cents. <laughs> Smarty, I bet you'd be surprised if I took it. I wouldn't be surprised if you sued me. Mary, right, let's get this finished, will you? Jack, you better pick up those lights off off the floor before somebody steps on them. Oh, yes. Now, where can I put them? You know, I'll put these lights up here on the chair, this chair right here. And, Mary, here's Rochester's present. I forgot that. Slip it under the tree. Boy, will he be surprised. But, Jack, how will he be surprised? You've got toilet water written all over the package. Well, you've got to do that with Rochester. When he opens the package and finds a bottle, he never stops to read the label. <laughs> last, last year, I gave him a miniature ship and a bottle, and the mask stuck out of his mouth for three days. <laughs> Every time I asked him something, he had to answer me through the crow's nest. <laughs> Believe me, Mary, I, I know what I'm doing. Well, Jack, I guess that does it. Tree's all finished. Yeah. Gee, it looks swell. I'm kind of tired. I think I'll sit down for a minute and smoke a cigarette. Mary, have you got a match? No. Oh, well. Oh, say, boss! What is it, Rochester? Are your socks dry yet? My socks? I think so. Well, people will be here soon. You better take them off the tree. <laughs> Oh, that's right. You take them off, will you, Rochester? I'm tired. I want to sit here a while. Yes, sir. Say, this tree looks all nice, but it's kind of dark. Oh, no wonder the lights aren't plugged in. Uh, I'll fix that. Pull it out! Pull it out! Pull it out! <laughs> For heaven's sake. Well, what's the matter, Jack? I was sitting on the wire. <laughs> as long as you're here, Rochester, give me a match. You don't need it now. Your cigarette is lit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Thanks, Rochester. Don't thank me. Thank that little man up at Boulder Dam. <laughs> Rochester. I wonder how that guy at Boulder Dam knew I was sitting... Oh, uh... Come in! Hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Merry Christmas, everybody. Same to you, Phil. Hey, Jackson, that Christmas tree looks terrific. Yeah, it is a nice tree, isn't it? Not only that, it's grown about two feet since last year. <laughs> Phil, this isn't the same one. You know, Phil, I believe in the old-fashioned way of getting a tree. I know when you get up early in the morning and bundle yourself up warm, and you throw an axe over your shoulder and go out in the woods, you know, way out in the wilderness and... Chop down your own Christmas tree. Yeah, you're right, Jackson. Where'd you find this one? In the lobby of the Beverly Wilshire Hotel. <laughs> you said it. Timber! <laughs> yes, sir. Say, Jackson, you ought to see the tree I got in my house. I got it all decorated, and then right on top, I got a big red star. A red star? Phil's supposed to be a silver star. I know, but this way I get five red points. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Harris, you humorous. You're the Mark Train of your generation. <laughs> Mark Twain, Phil, it's Twain. Twain. Wheelie? <laughs> Phil, after a gag like that, you're lucky Santa doesn't scratch you with his claws. <laughs> say, say, that was pretty good, too. Don't bother sending us Cracker Jack, Mother. We're now getting corn by the ton. <laughs> Oh, I don't know, Mary. I thought that was pretty cute. Hey, Phil, what do you got in that package there? Oh, I forgot, Jackson. It's a Christmas present for you. For me? Yeah, me and the boys in the band all chipped in and got it for you. Well, thanks, thanks. I'll put it under the tree. Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. Open it up right now. Okay. See, it was certainly nice of you and the boys to think of me. You know, I really didn't... Oh, Phil, thanks. Gee, a beautiful turtleneck sweater. Gee. Well, look inside of it, Jackson. Inside? Oh! Oh, Phil! What is it, Jack? A turtle. <laughs> A fine present. A 
fix him. Imagine bringing me a turtle for anything, Barry. Come here, Phil. Phil, sit down on my chair. Well, thanks, Jackson. Are you, uh, are you comfortable, Phil? Sure. Good, good. Mary, Mary, push in the plug. Oh, Jack, you wouldn't dare. Hand me the plug. I'll give it to him myself. Hey, Jackson, what about my present? Yes, sit where you are. You'll get it. You'll get it. It's a surprise. Mary, watch him jump. One, two, three. There. Hmm. <laughs> Phil, Phil, don't you feel anything? No, why? Hmm. Well, what about the surprise? What's the matter? Uh, we're having a little trouble at Boulder Dam. <laughs> Mary, I, I can't understand what went wrong. Phil, stand up a minute. Okay. Let's see. There must be something wrong with this thing. <laughs> Pull it out! Pull it out! Pull it out! I think to do to a guy on Christmas Eve. Well, it's your own fault for trying to play a trick on Phil. Oh, so that's it, eh, Jackson? Trying to give me a hot seat. Oh, it was nothing, Phil. I was just trying to have a little fun. Pull it out! Pull it out! Jack, that's a doorbell. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Come in. Hiya, Don. Hello, Larry. Oh, Hi, Don. 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 Larry. Hey, hey, I'm glad, I, I'm glad you Larry. fellas were able to come over. Well, say, Mr. Benny... Yes, Larry. Well, last night I went to the movies and I saw a picture called Hollywood Canteen. You did? Yes. And you want to know something? What? You were in it. <laughs> yes, yes, I know, kid. I I happened to see the picture. Eight times. <laughs> what? On the days he can't go, he sends me. <laughs> Rochester. Between you and me, that seat never gets a chance to cool off. Never mind. Well, say, Jack, I saw the picture, too. You did, Don? Well, Don, tell me, how did my violin solo go over? Well, Jack, this will amaze you. Really? When uh, you started to play, the man next to me got all excited and enthused. Oh, I get it, Don, I get it. You don't have to... Okay, Mr. Benny, I got the cake and coffee on the table. Good, come on, fellas, let's have a little bite. Oh, oh, yeah, come on, yeah, come on. Yeah, now, take it easy, yeah, fellas, take it easy, yeah. take it easy. Yeah. There's enough for all. Yes, folks, you don't have to crowd. Just line up to the right and have your ticket stuff ready. <laughs> Rochester, this is Christmas. Oh, oh, yes, excuse me. Now, fellas. Hey, who can that be? Come in. Well, I'll be darned. Hi there, Buck. Hello, everybody. Oh, yeah. What a surprise. Andy Devine. Well, who'd you think I was? Frank Sinatra? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Andy. Your voice and figure are both a little huskier, I think. Uh, hey, Andy, there's Don Wilson. Oh, yeah. Hello, Skinny. <laughs> Hello, Fatso. That's oh, uh, the first time I ever heard a pot call a pot a pot. <laughs> Say, Andy, Andy, how's your mother? Oh, she's swell, Buck. Hey, you know, it, it's nice the way you think of her every year. Oh, I always call my friends around the holidays. Well, you don't have to worry about Ma. Buck, she wouldn't think of buying her Christmas cards from anyone else but you. <laughs> oh. I know, that's why I always throw in a couple of extra ones, you know? Here you are, folks, here's a... Oh, hello, Mr. Devine. Well, hello, Rochester. I'm glad you dropped in on the boss. Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without you. Well, thanks, Rog. You know, the holidays wouldn't be the same if I didn't see all of you folks. <laughs> Those are the two voices that drove Gravel Gertie into hiding. <laughs> Say, come on, Andy, you're just in time to have a bite to eat. And listen, I've been saving a bottle of champagne just for this occasion. Let's drink a toast. Champagne? Oh, oh, come on, yeah. fellas, everybody. Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, Rochester, give me that bottle of champagne. Here you are, boss. Shall I open it? No, I'll open it myself. Thank you. <laughs> now, let's see. <clears throat> champagne corks are so tight. <clears throat> see, they're hard to get loose. Um... <clears throat> For goodness sake, fellas, don't just stand there. Pull the cork out of his mouth. Okay, 
Hey, hold your head still, Jackson. I'll pull the cork out. Well, grow, grow. Now, oh. there. <laughs> Jack. Jack, say something. <laughs> Boy. Here, Rochester. Rochester, fill the glasses. Yes, sir. Hey, fellas, how about a toast? Hey, huh? I got one. Got go toast. ahead, Andy, a toast, go ahead. Here's to you, Buck, Mary, Phil, and the whole gang. We've been friends for a long time, and I hope it always stays that way. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, Andy! Merry Christmas! Jack, can I give a toast, too? Sure, sure. Go right ahead, Mary. A Merry Christmas to everyone, everywhere. Well, yeah, Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everybody! Merry, 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 Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Jack, Jack, how about a toast from you? Me? Yeah, yeah, I'd like to give a toast too, Don. Uh, this is a toast to a lot of fellas I met in Africa, Europe, and the South Pacific. And to all you other boys out there I wasn't lucky enough to meet. Fellas, this is Christmas Eve, a time for happiness and good fellowship. A time when our hearts should be humble and forgiving. But this is war. And I've seen what you boys are up against on both sides of the world. I know the Christmas spirit must seem a very distant thing when you're crouched in a muddy foxhole or wading through the half-frozen slush. I know, too, that there's very little to remind you of Christmas inside a stifling tank or in the icy cockpit of a B-29 six miles above Tokyo. Maybe you feel it as something you lost long, long ago. Because the only Christmas lights you see are the bursts of shells or the flashing path cut by tracer bullets. But, but Christmas is a spirit, a spirit that springs from within and is so strong it transcends even the ugly scenes of a battlefield and fills the soul with a passion to defend the things that are right and just. You are the ones who have gone to the ends of the earth to preserve the freedom you know belongs to every man. To hasten the day when all mankind can once again live in dignity and in peace. So here's to you, fellas. Merry Christmas, and God bless you all.
Good night, folks. <laughs> Forces Radio Service.